those ones. What is cranking wieners? Welcome back to the channel. It is good to see ya. Uh, I'm starting today's video off at a gas station, one of my favorite gas stations, that being Dice Art. Do so you guys remember that commercial where like the two old couple are trying like really hard to say their line? And the line is buttery, flaky crust. Baked on a buttery, uh, crispy crust. Damn. Cool? Flaky. I thought I said flaky. This is literally where that was filmed, like this exact die starts. I had no idea that was a commercial for this place until I moved to Maine. And apparently sometimes they, they actually come to this very die starts and have breakfast. They eat, they eat some uh, buttery flaky pot pies or whatever the commercial was about. But anyway, that's not the focus of today's epi. What the focus is, is we're chasing after a fish that truly I've not caught much through the ice. The clock is ticking and we are running out of time to catch some gold species here in Maine. Kind of took the last three days off with it being Valentine's Day, but now we are back on our BS. We are joining forces with none other than Ryan from Ryan's Seasonal Service. There's his trailer right there. Alex is in the car. There's Alex, he's saying hello. And uh, you know, there's me, Sloth Boy Wonder, Stinky 2000, whatever you wanna call me, really. Alex was actually in Florida when Ryan and I kind of stumbled upon this bite on accident. For Valentine's Day, I went ice fishing with my girlfriend Kaylee and suddenly found this random spot in a lake I've only fished once and we caught this fish that we're chasing after today. So I figured we'd come back with a big camera and try to make it happen. Enough blabbering, we're ready to go. Let's get after it. I'll meet you guys out in the lake and uh, let's just have a day. Back to being the Token local guide Ryan, how you doing man? Well. 10 degrees out, but it kind of feels like it's like 30, you know? It doesn't feel bad, even though I'm bundling up like an Eskimo right now. But you look good. We're ready to go. We are ready. Can I catch today? You oh, missed that last time. Oh, sorry, edit that out. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Secret. Is it just not wanting to record today, or? There we go. I mean, on a normal day, probably pretty good, but I'm in 30 feet of water. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you can see bottom. Whoa, a little drunk there, take it easy. Camera had a four loco or two today. Oh, there's one right there, I see one right now. Oh yeah. Look at that, nice big swamp on the rock. Are you kidding? No, you can see him. Look, big, big rock, look to the left of that. That's him right there, yeah. <laughs> Oh Dude, this could okay, be so, so what cool. Is that in? I have no idea. Oh, I'm facing south. So that's south of where we're at right now. I don't have a phone. I, I, I'm not Lewis and Clark. He's south. He's still in the rock. These fish move way more than I thought. Okay. That is so cool. That is so cool. God, I love ice fishing sometimes. Well, here we are, gang. So... Right on the ice. We're getting things started off a little bit differently here. Normally, I'm using pan optics or my flasher, but uh, we figured we'd drop down this little aqua view seeing as how clear this lake is. I'm in 37 feet of water and I can see the bottom. And more importantly than the bottom, what I can see is a fat smallmouth chilling on a rock. That is today's objective. Big smallmouth through the ice. Very few places you can do that, but Maine is one of them. All right, I'm gonna move up a little bit. We're on a hump right now. Uh, like I said, we were here on Valentine's Day and we caught some of these guys. Kind of a fluke. We were uh, chasing lake trout and they came out of nowhere. So, um, figured we'd come back. Take advantage of it. This is a bit of a, a shallow to deep point. I've drilled, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes. And I'm going to work my way up to the shallower water and see if we can find some more fish. There is confirmed one fish in this vicinity, and it looks like a very big one. Our goal is to get one over three pounds today. I don't see anything over here. Oh, there's one. Fat one. Holy sh**. God, we got to find a way to pull this footage. That's a nice fish. Another, like, two or three pounder. It's coming up to the camera too. I'm gonna uh, take advantage of the few fish that I've seen on the camera and we're just gonna get to jigging. On. On. On, 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 on. Woo! Let's go, baby. <laughs> Feels good? Yeah, yeah. This is wicked. <laughs> oh, reel's frozen. Nice, that's good. Let me put some more water on it. <laughs> Please. Yeah. These are like, oh my god, it's nice one. Nice 
fish. I got him. I got him. Yeah. Look how he it's ate it too, man. Shoked it. Oh, he's not even hooked. Just, did it just come out? Oh, no. No, he's just like, like dropped. Oh my gosh, dude. First, when does it ever, we have not had a day where it's like worked out. First yeah, drop, dude. First Literally drop. first drop. He followed me down. He was a little bit, um, he was about four feet off bottom. He was just kind of suspended. Oh, wow. And I dropped it down. He chased it to bottom and then came back up. Congratulations, there's your small one. Main small through the ice. Really That's wicked. sick. First drop, dude. First drop. They're so docile right now. That's a pretty good kick though. First drop, that's insane. Let's get another one. Isn't it last year you were saying you just would love to figure out how to catch these things through the ice? And well, here we are. I think engulfed it way better than those ones that we yeah. had the other day. Oh, you got smelts. Yeah, I got smelts. And those those little uh, fat heads just lively as off. Yeah, they're nuts. Oh my gosh, there's a fish coming up off bottom for this. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You, I'm on, I'm on. <gasps> oh, I think, he, he, I think he came off, he came off, he came off. What do you think that was? I don't know, but it's he destroyed it. <laughs> what the heck? I didn't get a good hook set. He just grabbed it. That was insane. A little up. Here, oh, he's gonna come get it again. He's gonna come up again. He's gonna come up again. On. <laughs> Grab that deucer. Yep. What is going on here? He's in the hole. He's coming in the hole. Small off. So you just hand fed a small off. <laughs> <laughs> that, that smell? Yeah. Oh, oh it's, God, huge, it's huge, dude. It's huge. It's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Oh, that is so cool. Is um, he stuck? No, he's swimming by the hole. Yeah, I can see him down there. There was multiple fish. Too. Yeah. There was three or four marks there. Oh my god. Let's get him up through the hole. This is a big fish. Ready? Yeah. He doesn't want to come up, dude. Oh my god, that was huge. Let me get the big tail. <laughs> Dude, it like sucked it down too. Out of all the fish in Maine, this is the last one I thought we'd be able to get dialed in. All right, so I was like, you know, let's catch a smallmouth on a tip up on a live bait. And I came over, popped this hole, there's 23 feet of water and dropped the live bait down and it got to about literally like 15 feet. And this fish came up and smacked it. Crushed it. I actually lost one and then dropped it back down and another one hit. That is insane. Literally hand fed that small one. That like never happens too. And for a fish that big, that's probably close to four pounds. That is, re that's like a, tw dude, that's a 20 inch fish all day. All day. That's a 20 inch fish. Look at the head on that thing. Dude, look at the hump. Dude, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he was mad. That was sweet, dude. Oh my God. So Ryan literally just released his fish that he got on the tip up. And I came over to my rod, which is just sitting in the hole. There's like three fish looking. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. Oh my god, this is crazy. This is insane. No, it came off. It just came off. I was not, I didn't even see him on the graph. He literally just came out of nowhere. That's like two bites back to back. This is absolutely insane. Not what I had expected when we came here. Let's keep it going. That, my, that one I just had literally took the rod on my hand. Oh my gosh. Dude, on a day like today, could you even keep a tip up in the hole? Oh, this is amazing. Oh, oh my God, please happen again. I'm gonna try to put another one back down. <laughs> oh, my hands are so cold. I'm, there's literally a fish on bottom. This is going to happen again right now. This is so comical. Okay, I'm going to try to set this. Oh my God, Ryan, ah, Jesus. No way. No way. <laughs> what just happened? Ryan's rod was sitting in the hole and I'm like, watch that thing just go in the hole. I'm watching the rod tip just go straight down. It's a pretty good fish. This thing was sitting there with artificial bait, no live bait at all. We are on a mega school of winter smallmouth. 
I don't know how good of a hook that I got on this guy, but I stuck him pretty good. That's a nice fish. Nice bronze back. <laughs> Dude, this thing was just sitting in the hole. <laughs> this is so much fun. I'm losing my mind right now. Absolutely kooked. This is Ryan's setup. It was just sitting there while he was messing with the tip up. Watch that flag just go off. Beautiful main winter smallmouth. These guys are pretty fragile in the winter time, so we're going to get them right back in the water. This is insane. Three, so, what, three small? Three small if we've been here for like 20 minutes. I have a feeling it's going to be really kooky. We do have a window right now, so we need to keep fishing. These fish could turn off at any, any moment. Okay. My hands are wet. They're freezing. I'm like, I don't know what the protocol is here. I feel like I'm 12 years old again on like the little bass pond that I found in the middle of the woods. And I'm just catching four pounder after four pounder. Oh my God, there's a bass feeding on these smelts right now. I'm sweating and I'm out of breath. <laughs> Get it. Yep. I need a woman. Flag small mount. Uh oh. Doesn't feel huge. Oh, it's big. I got him. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Another smallmouth on the flag, same exact spot where Ryan got his too. We're using smelt right now, which is primarily like a, a, a trout bait, like for brookies and lake trout. But because there's naturally occurring smelt in this lake, the smallmouth also feed on them. And we're seeing schools of wild smelt down there. So what we're doing is we're using some smelt that we got from Beach Grove, and we're catching brown bass. This is so unorthodox for Maine, but I love it. Back down you go. See you, sister. This is beyond expectation. I am, my mind is bent. Like we're not gonna be able to keep rods in the water as long as the spike keeps up. It's still early in the day too. Dude! This is stupid. I have no words right now. I literally have no words. We'll keep looking for these fish. Kind of slowed down, so. It's slow is relative to the bite, but we're just gonna keep, keep moving. This is the ultimate way to jig right here. The only thing that'd be better if the seat was heated. I just love to know how it happened. Like, who was the first guy to put small up here? Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, what do you do? Like come from mass with like a bucket and a small mouth and like, all right, here, just dump a few in there. And then somehow they literally <laughs> infest all the lakes. Like same with largemouth. That just seems so crazy to me. Well, right off the end of our dock this summer, there was a little male on a bed all summer. They spent one day trying to see how many different artificial lures that fish would eat off the bed. And I think they caught him like 15 times. God, I want to move, but I also know that it's not necessary. But I couldn't have been like, I mean, that would have been too good to be true if it was like that all day or it was just like nonstop, nonstop. I'd have been asking for too much. These fish definitely feed in windows. We haven't gotten a bite in what, two hours, Ryan? Yeah. I haven't gotten a bite in two hours. The wind has picked up, so it's gotten significantly colder. It was beautiful when we came out here. Didn't even need the gloves. Now my nose is a waterfall, a snotty waterfall. <laughs> have not marked a fish, really. Alex did get one. But other than that, have not marked a fish. I can't even see the fish anymore on the bottom with the camera, which leads me to believe they probably push off either deeper or shallower on the hump. I think they use this as an area to like chase smelt. They use this as like a wall to push up bait, similar to what lake trout do when they hunt. And when the camera's not even working, I don't know what the f No signal, all right, eat my ass, whatever. Yeah, I have no idea what that's all about. I can't even get the camera to work, but we did see some fish in like 44 on the graph, which is right here. I was gonna stick the this thing down there, but it's just not wanting to work today. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's tough. We're not seeing as much, we're not catching as much. Things aren't looking good. We might give it a few more hours and maybe head back to Camp Claw. Where are the smallmouth? I don't know. It looks like trash, but I'm gonna give it a go. Oh, here we go. That was quick. Come on. Instantly marked a fish and he's gone. Wicked. Wicked. Well, gang, we're heading off the ice. Short-lived bite, but man, that was like some of the most intense moments here in Maine, as far as ice fishing goes. Ryan, thank you for fishing with us. This is actually Ryan's spot, but we kind of found this little nugget together a few days ago. Yeah. 
uh, we were on a Valentine's date together, just you and I. Yeah, yeah. it was it was very romantic. Yeah, um, yeah. full we, of smallmouth. Full of smallmouth and then bass. We, yeah, smallmouth bass. Yeah. We figured we'd relive it. Yeah. Today and we caught some fish, but it's I'm going insane. It's it's freezing cold. I can't feel my face, so I'm talking like this. And the smallmouth is completely shut off. They're still there. They're literally still there, but they won't bite. So whatever. I don't know if there's a window deal with these fish. It's kind of what I figured, or if the smelt aren't here and therefore they're not very hungry. But that's all she wrote. We're gonna head back on the road and we'll meet you guys at camp. Well, as you can tell, we're back at Camp Claw. Some kind of exciting news. You guys have probably seen bits and pieces of this here rig behind me uh, in past videos. It's kind of been the background on accident, but what? Fan of whiting it, you know? Uh, look, look. <laughs> look take, take a look. Take a look at her. Yeah, you guys have probably seen this vehicle in a lot of my past Texas videos, but somehow it found its way up here in Maine. The LX470, the Land Cruiser, whatever you want to call it, wasn't getting down and dirty. It wasn't living up to its full potential, so I figured I'd bring it up to the northeastern woods of Maine, specifically Camp Claw. There's so many great off-roading opportunities up here, and with this this puppy's lift and, and, and big 33-inch tires, um, it's going to get a lot of use. As you can tell, she's already pretty snowed over. This, this car, I've never really gotten to use to its full potential, and just recently I, I've been driving around in some heavy snow, and it does so well, wow. so I figured we'd get off the ice and head back to Camp Claw and just I wanted to share that with you guys that the the LX is, is up in Maine permanently. We now have two Toyotas, Lexus or whatever you want to call them, two Toyotas up here in Maine and they're both going to serve some huge purposes. I don't know really which one I'm going to use most for towing and for off-roading, but they're both extremely capable. For example, watch this. So what I'm trying to do is purposely get it stuck to show you how I can get it unstuck. And I can't really show you how to get it unstuck because I'm an idiot. Hang on. You were, you were almost there. The point of all that stupidity was to show you that I can get it stuck and unstuck. Remember when we had the Forerunner, the original Forerunner, the OG rigged runner, and I got it stuck and I, and I couldn't get it unstuck? This is why I brought this puppy up here. It's ready for the main woods. Granted, I couldn't keep going because I'd, I'd probably really myself, but at the very least, you get the point. Big tires, a little bit of a lift, all wheel drive. She's meant for main, and that's why we brought her up here. I love this thing. Should I keep going? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm gonna do it. I'm just kidding. Now that I'm done being a dumbass, I figured I'd use this opportunity to give you guys an update for the barn, the main bass barn, which by the way has progressed a lot. I know it may seem like it's not changed too much. It looks very, very much the same as Alex throws snowballs behind me, but take a look at this. This is something that's very cool. I actually did not get a chance to show you guys this when it was being built the other day. I don't really want to set up a camera in here while guys are working. I don't want to be that dude, but what is cool is the, uh, the trusses are now working, or I guess the carpenters are now working on the loft part of the barn. It's hard to show you guys from this angle, but where I'm standing right here, this long portion is where the steps are gonna be. So this is not only gonna be a place for the toys, the side-by-sides, the sleds, the boats, but it's gonna be a place for people to live. I've got a heating guy, an electrical guy, and a water dude coming very soon, probably March, to take a look at this barn, and they're gonna rig this thing up. So it's gonna be kind of like a, a cabin away from the cabin, and a place for us to do what we do pretty much on a daily basis. That is, you know, work on the boat, work on the side-by-sides and the sleds. Sleds if it's winter, obviously. I'm super pumped for this. They literally just put that loft up today and I'm quite excited for the finished product. I know it may seem like a skeleton and not like much right now, but once they, uh, once they actually finalize everything, which should be, fingers crossed from what I've been told, the end of February, then this will be the real deal and we'll start getting some of the snowy toys in the in the barn. Right now the whaler is covered in snow, right now the low is covered in snow. Commander 800R, covered in snow. Pretty much everything is covered in snow up here in Maine and also apparently Texas too. That's why I've been up here in the north is because where I live in Texas has been an absolute gong show. How many inches of snow, Alex? Like almost six or something like that? Six, six seven, eight, somewhere around Six, there. eight, ice negative one degrees in Texas. There's nothing I need to be doing down there. So uh, that's why we're up here. Uh, before we close today's video, I want to show you guys 
uh, a little something that you've probably haven't seen in a long time on this channel, and that being the orange regret. Hopefully she starts. She's been in a, a dormant slumber for many months now. Sounds a little cold, but rightfully so. Everything works. No codes, not even a low battery code. She's good to go. <laughs> I miss this thing so much. Oh, it pains me that we're giving this thing away. But as you guys see, I don't deserve this. I don't treat my things nicely. And this is a an amazing, this is an amazing tool. This is an amazing side-by-side -side that is going to go to a really good home. I think I might have said this in my last video, but Alec, the winner of the Razor giveaway, is coming from San Diego to Camp Claw in a few days. So I've actually been working on the battery and stuff like that. That was not my first cold start on this thing. I started this up two days ago, got the battery uh, charged up, cleaned some things out, dusted off the seats. I'm gonna clean it, obviously, a little bit more, but we were getting ready for a really awesome video. A last final send-off for the razor, we're gonna take this puppy ice fishing when Alec comes. He's never been ice fishing before. He actually races side-by-sides, I believe, and he's never been on a side-by-side -side in snowy terrain. So it's gonna be a really awesome experience. I'm very pumped. I'm glad this, this puppy, the orange regret, is going on to someone else. I was actually thinking the other day, if Polaris comes out with a 2021 or like a 2022 Razor Pro XP, the same model as this one, I will get it. I will get it. I was actually looking at, Newer razors or potentially a Maverick uh, X3, I think that's what it is. It's the competitor of the razor. Not that I don't like this machine, I just want to test the playing field, make sure that there's not a better uh, side by side out there. Well, Wieners, that is going to conclude today's video. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Today was it was epic, it was weird, it was intense, and I'm glad that you were a part of it. We caught some smallmouth, a very uncommon fish to catch through the ice. We did it in like 45 minutes, we made it happen. And uh, I got to show you guys some cool stuff that we're working on here in camp. Unfortunately, we're leaving soon. We're going back to Texas, which I guess, double-edged sword. I'm excited to go back to Texas, but it doesn't look like Texas is, is right in the head right now. Texas needs to lay off the Tito's and get a little bit warmer. At the very least, we're gonna spend some really awesome last minute moments up here in the beautiful northeastern woods. Uh, I wish you guys could all experience this place because it's true beauty is something to appreciate. But anyway, I'm peace and out signing off. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I'll catch you guys on the next one. As always, folks, keep fishing, never stop.